Good afternoon and welcome to the March meeting of the Housing Opportunity Fund Advisory Board. Um, we're going to get started. We do have ASL interpretation available today. Um, to follow along, we would pin Joan S. and Chad B. to your screen. We begin with our roll call. Lena Andrews. Morgan Overton. Present. Dr. Jamil Bay. Karen Garrett. Here. Rome Jackson. Here. Councilwoman Deb Gross. Mark Masterson. Here. Deirdre Washington. Marcus Reed. Uh, Dr. Paul Spradley. Here. Alan Sisko. Derek Tillman. Astra Tickle. Here. Adrian Wonaha. Present. Um, I am Kelly and I am present and our last um, slot is currently vacant. Kelly, I'm I'm present. Sorry, I'm late. Okay. This is Lena. Okay, thank you, Lena. I thought I saw your name, but I didn't hear you. So, all right. And I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. And Derek's here as well. And Derek, thank you. And I saw Councilwoman Deb Gross popped on also. All right. So Hi, everybody. Thank you. Hello. Okay, so we've got a fuller house than we thought. Excellent. Um, next, I believe, is the um, review and acceptance of the minutes from February's meeting. Has everyone had the opportunity to review those? Do you have any additions, corrections, or changes? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. Thank you, Derek. Second. All right, thank you, Paul. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? Um, just for the minutes, I see that Jerome Jackson is on as well. I don't believe that um, we got a response from him when we were doing the call. All right. Um, yeah, I, I I thought I responded. Maybe you didn't hear me. I, di I didn't hear you, but I just want to make sure that everybody knew and that the minutes showed that you are um, here. Thank you, Kelly. No problem. Okay. Um, we do not have any public comment, um, and so we will uh, keep rolling through the agenda. Um, first, we have a presentation on the revitalized. Um, we normally don't say revitalized around programming as we normally say it around buildings, um, but housing stabilization program uh, with a presentation from Action Housing about the next steps that they're taking on this program. Great, thank you, Kelly. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kyle Webster, uh, and I am the Vice President of Housing and General Counsel for Action Housing. Uh, Natalie Ryan, uh, we have two meetings right now. She took one, I took the other, so you have me uh, and me alone today. Uh, so we wanted to give a quick broad overview and also uh, present um, kind of an ask for the Housing Opportunity Fund, HSP funds, um, as we move into this new program. So uh, last summer, uh, County DHS issued an RFP for a collaborative, um, large uh, stretching rental assistance approach in the housing stabilization world uh, that would bring together the five primary funding sources for rental assistance and housing stabilization in Allegheny County. Uh, this was essentially learning from lessons and using technology created under the emergency rental assistance program, uh, bringing them all together and also trying to be more efficient and user friendly. Uh, Pre-COVID, uh, a person who wanted to pursue rental assistance in Allegheny County often had to apply individually and find each individual program. Uh, the goal of this was to create a front door for all programs. Uh, Action Housing was one of multiple uh, bidders on this RFP. We were awarded the uh, grant in um, December alongside our partners, which includes the YWCA, uh, Urban League of Greater Pittsburgh, Neighborhood Allies, uh, Just Mediation Pittsburgh, Rent Help PGH, and um, WAVE, who are all a part of our collaborative. Uh, and we are launching this month, actually last month, I guess now in February, the Allegheny Housing Stabilization Collaborative, which is the title or ask 
for the uh, new program that will consist of five different funding sources, including HSP. When we were putting together this RFP, one of the asks was that we use lessons learned to try to figure out innovative ways to best help people facing housing instability. So uh, Action Housing alongside our partners developed a few novel ideas um, that have uh, been met with a lot of excitement um, from DHS, uh, from the housing civilization and tenant rights communities. Uh, and one of the primary reasons I'm here is to ask for your permission to uh, use HSP funds in this way. Uh, we currently have approval for the other four funding sources to be used in these two kind of novel things I'm gonna discuss, uh, but we're asking for uh, uh, URA approval for the HSP funds. So if we can go to the next slide. So one of the issues we've seen um, is how far money can go. So when you are facing eviction in Allegheny County, um, an appeal goes to the Court of Common Pleas, which is something that happens as a matter of right, should you choose that appeal, you have to do what's called established supersedious. I'm also going to acknowledge I'm explaining some complicated stuff. So, uh, and it's stuff that I deal with daily, you all do not. Please ask questions. I'm happy to talk one-on-one -on -one with anyone uh, should you have follow-up questions, because uh, I, I know I'm throwing a lot at you. So uh, when you appeal, you have to do what's called establishing supersedious at the Court of Common Pleas. Uh, the, the reason for this is because the belief is you need to be able to evidence that you have the ability to pay rent for the eviction and move forward. If you don't establish supersedious, which requires you to pay your rent into the Court of Common Pleas, uh, it means that possession will be granted to your uh, landlord the eviction will move forward on the matter of how much money is owed, but the lockout will be able to happen more immediately uh, and the eviction uh, on that side does not move forward. Right now, there's only one fund that covers the supersedious costs for low income tenants who cannot afford it. Uh, and that's the uh, Pittsburgh Union for Regional Renters uh, or PER, which is a group some of you may be familiar with. They have a supersedious fund that is from a grant they received from the Pittsburgh Foundation uh, that they pay into the Court of Common Pleas to help low-income tenants who are facing hardship uh, in establishing that supersedious. That's what happens now, and that fund runs out every year because it is a finite amount of money and the need is great. And uh, unfortunately, the need is becoming greater uh, by the day because we are seeing uh, evictions uh, going higher and higher each day here in Allegheny County. So our idea that we pitched the DHS, which we now have approval to use the other four funding sources for, and we'd love to be able to use the funding sources for HSP for as well, is this kind of step process that we've outlined here. So we know that uh, DHS does not want action paying uh, per directly, but we've been given permission to establish a fund internally at action, which the Opportunity Fund, um, not the Housing Opportunity Fund, but the Grant uh, Foundation Organization uh, Opportunity Fund has given us a grant where PER will pay tenants superseduses. They will then inform Action Housing of the names of the supersedious payments that were made. And then if and when tenants are deemed eligible for rental assistance through our programs, we will then pay out of this fund um, their supersedious payment to PER. This allows us to ensure that that supersedious fund doesn't run out. Our belief is that the supersedious fund will uh, be able to touch literally hundreds more households as a result of this kind of revolving fund. Um, and it will be a dollar for dollar. So essentially, once we determine eligibility, we will then make payment to the landlord as well as to the supersedious fund. And then the supersedious fund will make payment to PER. So it allows us to use rental assistance money to reimburse PER so that PER is able to establish supersedious for literally hundreds more tenants who are facing eviction. Uh, to give some context, previously, this fund generally runs out of money by June or July. Uh, and this will allow the money to not just go until the end of the year, but to likely continue into the next year so they don't have the same urgent need for additional grant funding in the event that they don't ever get this grant moving forward. They would still have that money to be able to spend. So that is the first ask is, can we use HSP to internally reimburse Action Housing for the supersedious funds to allow us uh, to establish uh, this process to let that supersedious fund from PER go much, much further? And we're literally talking annually, they do about 60. We believe under this, it would allow them to do close to 200 a year, uh, which obviously is substantially more and will have a massive, massive impact. So any questions on that? Again, I know I'm throwing a lot at you at once and it's quite complicated. No, Kyle, I just want to say um, I normally don't obvious. 
I visibly geek out, not at this <laughs> rate, but as a former tenants rights attorney fighting eviction, this was always a sticking point. And I think that the, um, the request for um, responders to the RFP to apply lessons learned, um, identifying this particular crack that folks um, fall through um, is very exciting to me personally. Um, so I just want to, before you, before you go on, cause I'm sure there are other cool things uh, that you have <laughs> for us. I wanted to just pause and say that I think this is a, a really cool um, innovation uh, potentially. So um, I'll let you, I don't know if anybody else has anything to add, but uh, I couldn't, contain my enthusiasm uh, about uh, this solution. That's great, Kelly. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's all about leveraging funding, going as far as possible so we can help more people. And I think it's it's kind of a no-brainer. It's complicated. And it's also our accounting staff at Action, they're not excited about how complicated I've made their it's, lives. It's very complicated. <laughs> like, there's a reason that this crack exists. Yeah. It's yeah. Very, yeah. very complicated. Um, anyway, I'll let you. I'll let no, I, pre I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Um, continue. Does anybody else have any questions or thoughts or comments? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, uh, <laughs> to jump in so quickly. Um, I appreciate it, Kelly. It, it bodes well for our ideas. So that's good. <laughs> Great. So, um, and the other thing to note about this one is this one is a dollar for dollar. We would not take any money until the person is definitively proven eligible. Um, so yeah. So now if we can go to the next slide. So this is the second thing that we're asking of HSP that, again, the other four funding sources have approved. So we are already beginning to do this, uh, but we would love to be able to do it for HSP um, uh, eligible tenants as well. So another one of the issues in the system is rental assistance that is government funded uh, doesn't move as fast as people sometimes need it to move. Um, while in an ideal world, every tenant would contact us with plenty of notice so that we're able to work with them through the process. Uh, it is not uncommon for someone to walk into our office and say, or walk into the Housing Stabilization Center, uh, which Action runs downtown alongside our allies at Hill District Consensus and uh, uh, Rental PGH, and say, I have an order for lockout that is this Friday, and it is Thursday. Uh, the issue with that is uh, the bureaucracy of rental assistance programs doesn't move fast enough to help these people, uh, which is completely understandable. We need documentation. We need to be able to support their eligibility, et cetera. So... What we um, have decided to do, and our, our friends at the Pittsburgh Foundation have been incredible about uh, giving Action a $175,000 grant, is to create what we're kind of calling overdraft protection. So what it is, is if somebody comes into our office and says, um, or calls us or comes through one of our partners and says that they're facing imminent lockout, so their uh, situation is urgent to a degree uh, that our program and our system will not be able to help them. We will be able to do a pre-application, which is a simple one-page document that requires no support, where we just ask them certain questions that makes it appear that they will be eligible for one of our programs. And assuming that they do appear to be eligible, we will immediately cut them a check uh, to their landlord uh, to stop the, the lockout. What many of you may have heard of is this thing called pay and stay, and it's where a tenant can pay uh, to be able to stay. So the uh, landlord cannot lock them out if the payment is made. Uh, this fund allows us to make that payment within that period so that we can stop that lockout from happening. After the lockout is prevented, we can then, um, we, and we make the payment out of the Pittsburgh Foundation Emergency Fund, our quote unquote overdraft protection. Uh, the payment is going to be made within one business day to the landlord so that we are able to prevent that lockout. Action staff will then work with that tenant uh, to go through the normal application process. Once it is determined if they're eligible for one of the programs under ASK, we will then reimburse the Pittsburgh Foundation Emergency Fund with the rental assistance fund dollars so that fund can continue to be a bit of a revolver. If they are not deemed to be eligible for any programs, that fund will not be reimbursed. So this is not a dollar for dollar. We know that eventually over time, this fund will be exhausted, though we believe that that will take upwards of five years or so based upon our estimates of the, the people who come through our doors and their eligibility likelihood. We find that about 2% of the people who contact us are not eligible for something. So against, uh, eventually that 2% will diminish this fund, but that's okay. Um, this will still allow us uh, to have this emergency response when people are facing true urgency, um, but then it allows us to replenish that fund uh, with this money so that it does not 
uh, diminish too quickly and we can help hopefully uh, hundreds and hundreds of tenants over the next five years who are facing those emergency potential lockouts. So again, the ask is that we are able to use HSP funds to reimburse action housing when and if a tenant who taps into our emergency fund is deemed eligible. Uh, the other four funds have said yes. This is uh, the one fund we need the approval from. Um, and that's it. So any questions on this one? No, Great. this really appears to be uh, like exactly the perfect fit for our funds to fill these holes. This is really great. Absolutely. We appreciate that. It's just basically right now we have we have uh, authority to pay the landlord. We're asking for authority to pay ourselves, which is why obviously, A, it's good that we're being transparent and public about this because it will look like actions paying itself, but it will uh, you know be through this process, which I think will clearly have a net positive impact on housing stabilization here in Allegheny County. Well, for these funds, just the city of Pittsburgh, but uh, program wide for Allegheny County. Great. Well, thank you all very much for the time. Like I said, I invite anyone to reach out to me should you have follow-up questions about either of these funds um, uh, or either of these processes or the ASK program as a whole. Uh, we would love to speak with you about it and uh, talk through it with you. Um, and thank you for the time. Kyle, do we have your contacts? Info? I can put it. I can't put it in the chat because I don't have a chat. Um, it's kwebster at actionhousing.org. It's welcome to be shared. Um, uh, whoever's in charge is welcome to share that as much as you want. <laughs> but it's just Kay Webster at actionhousing.org. Yeah, I'll share his email after the meeting today. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, Kyle, I, I do have one, one quick question. I think you answered it. I just wanted to get clarity. Um, you, you said a lot, so I'm not sure where this fits, but uh, does, does one of the funds allow you to uh, re respond quick enough if if the tenant is facing the eviction to 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 pay within their lot of time because you know it's like a a short window um, before that you know eviction is is advanced and takes place uh, and a lot of times these these programs you know just take too long for for the funds to to actually be uh, administered. It's one thing for it to be approved, but I'm actually talking about it being paid. No, absolutely. So that's the one that's currently up, which is the Pittsburgh Foundation Emergency Fund. Uh, that one uh, is going to be a 24-hour turnaround. Uh, 24 business hours, I should say. So one business day turnaround is our commitment on that. Um, because we know, I mean, the fastest we can possibly make payment um, in one of the government programs generally is going to be four to five days. Um, and that's being very optimistic that everything went right on day one. Um, so yeah, this Pittsburgh Foundation Emergency Fund is set up specifically to address exactly what you just identified. Okay, that's great. Thank you. And I should just highlight, we we did not come up with this idea. Uh, one of the big things in the service industry is obviously making sure that you're tapping into uh, best practices uh, when it comes to social service. Uh, the uh, uh, Denver uh, implemented something like this uh, that myself and the Pittsburgh Foundation and DHS were on a call where they talked about it. We love the idea. Our friends at Pittsburgh Foundation were willing to fund it, and um, we're very, very excited to implement it. Any other questions for Kyle? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I believe that we're going to need, if we um, don't have any other questions here, I think we might need, mo do we need motions to use, uh, is explicit approval to use the funds in this way, or is this covered? So I, I'm looking at the program guidelines right now, and it does say eligible uses of funds um, uh, could be legal services um, uh, for eligible households. This program, housing stabilization, existed before the legal assistance program. So okay. I do, I, I don't know, I, I personally feel like it's covered so under I, what was just talked about. But I know, weird. Like, right, like, I mean, we're within the, um, you know, we're within the legislation, but I don't know if we need um, to, to vote for these specific changes. Or, um, Ke Kevin, um, Kyle, excuse me, are you still here? Do you need something explicitly from us to make this possible, like you have the explicit authorization from the other um, funders? So I defer to my friends at the URA. Um, we presented this to the URA uh, folks uh, 
earlier this earlier last month, um, and they were the ones that asked us to come present it to the HOF uh, board uh, just to ensure that everyone understood and was okay with it. So I, I defer to them. I mean, Brianna um, uh, uh, and uh, Evan and Derek were the, I, I don't remember exactly who was on the meeting. It was some combination of the three of you. So um, <laughs> I defer to them. So, um, so I think to be on the safe side, we should probably have it in our minutes um, that we're approving these expenditures so that Kyle's covered. I know uh, we are on the side sometimes lawyers are putting everything in writing but i think that just covers everybody's um i appreciate that i think that's the right. thing to do versus, yeah. versus, like agree. everybody seemed to think it was a good idea kelly and mark said thumbs up um but might not pass muster um <laughs> if you were to get audited um so if uh we would um can we put the first slide up because this is the second one um we don't have great wording, you know, we don't have it queued up like we do um, later on the agenda, but would anybody like to take a shot at making a motion to, on the supersedious fund, um, or should we have some further discussion? Kelly, this is Adrian. I apologize. I can't make any kind of motions because I can't really see anything I'm driving. Okay. Um, and I am. We would like for you to live. Wholehearted, <laughs> I am wholeheartedly in favor of all of this discussion and making the program dollars more flexible and more responsive. Um, but on that note, I do have to leave the meeting. I apologize to everyone. Um, but we are recording, so you have my wholehearted support on this topic. Um, and thanks, everybody. If you need me to weigh in on anything after the meeting, please just let me know. Okay. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. I, I, I can try to make the motion. Uh, okay. So I'll make the motion to approve uh, the rental assistance uh, fund to be used for the Opportunity Fund Super CDS Fund, um, as, as explained uh, within the presentation today. I think that works. I'll second that. <laughs> Thank you, Jerome. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I think I need to recuse myself, I Kelly. I think you this do need Lena. to abstain, yeah. Lena. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I, you should have one abstention. <laughs> Any other Maybe. abstentions other than Lena? Okay, great. Uh, the motion carries. Um, we'll do the, the next one. If anybody would like to take a shot at this. I can, I'm trying to remember the action. Honestly, I got lost somewhere <laughs> along the way. Uh, I'll take a shot at it. Um, that um, uh, the the uh, housing stabilization uh, funds be used for uh, to enable Action Housing to reimburse their Pittsburgh Foundation Emergency Fund with rental assistance fund dollars. Second. Perfect. Um, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Um, any opposed? We have an abstention from Lena Andrews uh, on the record for both of these. Any other abstentions? Great. Well, congratulations, Kyle, in Action Housing and the City of Pittsburgh and us also at the um, um, Housing Opportunity Fund. Um, I think this is going to make be a very impactful use of our funds. Um, thank you. for bringing Thank you so much, all. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Up next, we have the for sale development project uh, loan approval um, and the proposal from Imani Christian Community Development Corporation. Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Victoria Jackson and I'm a lending analyst with the Residential Lending and Investments Unit here at the URA. Today, I am presenting a pre-development loan request from Imani Christian Community Development Corporation, also known as Imani Christian CDC. Amani Christian CDC requests a loan in the amount of $60,000 to finance the pre-development activities related to the new construction of two affordable for-sale townhomes on Ledley Street in the Crawford Roberts neighborhood. The proposed loan would be sourced with Hoff 2022 for-sale development program funds. The loan will have a 12-month term at 0% interest and carry a 15-year affordability period, deed restricting the property to buyers at or below 80% AMI. The pre-development loan would be used to pay for architectural and engineering design services, as well as project consultants. 
The two units in this project are part of phase one of Amani Christian CDC's Hill District Renaissance Project. Phase one uh, ultimately will include 10 newly constructed units, uh, four cell units in the Hill District. These units are intended to be three bedroom, one and a half bathroom townhomes at a sales price of $150,000. Both units are to be reserved for low-income households, as well as households with special needs or households experiencing housing insecurity. Amani Christian CDC uh, does plan to begin construction in July of 2023 and complete construction in February 2024. In addition to committing their own equity, Amani Christian CDC has secured a commitment from Bridgeway Capital to finance pre-development costs. Um, unfortunately, Reverend Walls of Amani Christian CDC was not able to join us today. Um, but in addition to passing along their thank yous to both the Hoff and URA for their efforts to partner um, in delivering affordable home ownership options in the Hill District, I was asked to read the following statement. Ledley Street, um, and this is from Amani Christian CDC, uh, quote, Ledley Street townhomes consist of new construction of two modern high efficiency four cell residential units on vacant underutilized land in the heart of the city of Pittsburgh. The project will be will use modular construction to build two three-story semi-detached units of affordable housing, each with three bedrooms, one and a half baths, and approximately 1,470 square feet of living space. Both units are reserved for low-income households and households that are special needs or homeless. The project sits at the edge of the Lower Hill District, which has a population of 2,225 with 77% of the population identifying as black and more than 41% of these residents living at or below the poverty level, which makes the need for affordable housing even more critical. Ledley Street Townhomes has widespread community support and is in alignment with the City of Pittsburgh HUD Consolidation Plan, as well as the Neighborhood Master Plan, and it will provide necessary infill housing in the Hill District neighborhood, which will enhance the lives of residents of the Hill District. This project serves as phase one of four cell units for the Hill District Renaissance Project and is expected to break ground in summer 2023. Um, so with that, once again, uh, we are requesting approval for a pre-development loan of uh, in the amount of up to $60,000 for a Monte Christian CDC. With that, I will turn it over for questions. I had a question just in the description of the project and, and who the units are for. Um, and it's 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 like in the first paragraph, uh, it uh, says it's for households with special needs or at risk of experiencing homelessness. Uh, what what do you what's meant by special needs? Um I do not have the specific answer to that criteria it is a question I'd be willing to pose to Amani and, you know, and again, unfortunately, Reverend Wallace isn't here today. I will say that we, we've had other applications from other organizations that have also set aside housing for folks with special needs, the understanding that um, what I would assume, I would assume is whatever would meet the ADA requirement for that term. Um, yeah, that's so, what I was wondering, because it's a townhome design, they took you know, having mm -hmm. been a builder and you know developer that townhouses typically aren't uh very uh unless we're doing something different that that's why i was asking is is it or was that just a holdover from a previous description or you know no that was the description they also included in their own okay. wording again this this may just be my due diligence i didn't follow up with this with the specifics of that or with the specifics of okay. that because i just had my own assumptions about it but i am happy to pose that question to the organization it, it, it's fine so and this is this is pre-development they don't know you know they don't have drawings i understand that i just wondered if they were going to do something that might be kind of innovative that we can maybe share with other folks that are doing similar developments so I, I I saw on on the uh, presentation that they are receiving money from the Federal Home Loan Bank, and I know that that might be the requirements of the Federal Home Loan Bank. They have the homelessness and special needs. Under the Federal Home Loan Bank, special needs can be someone with uh, physical needs, uh, mental. So their special needs kind of cover all mental, physical, um, as special needs um, in in their. Um, requirements okay. so it wouldn't be just someone with um physical um a physical disability but someone with a physical disability mental disability or or something like that thanks
there any other questions for Victoria? Would any like to, anyone like to make a motion on this or? Move to approve. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I need to recuse myself from the vote. This is okay. Derek. Thank you, Derek. Um, so this, any opposed? We have an abstention for the record. All right. The ayes have it. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Okay, there are no uh, URA administrative updates, um, but we do have a couple of advisory board administrative updates. Um, we, um, Mark, is there anything to report from the Fair Housing Committee meeting um, that was within the past couple of weeks? Um, we just, you know, we, I think we're kind of waiting for the uh, for the retreat. I guess okay. sort of where it got left. Okay, great. Um, so. I'm going to flip the order of these um, and discuss the retreat, uh, which is scheduled now for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so that's March 17th from 11 to 2 o'clock. Um, very excited about the agenda that we have prepared uh, for uh, that day. Uh, we'll be in person, uh, which will be the first time that many of us are in person together, which is pretty exciting. Um, we have a lovely lunch uh, prepared. Um, Carmice, everybody, if you're uh, interested, um, let us know if you have any food issues, though, so we can make sure that there's something, um, if you have any food sensitivities, so we can make sure that we order something that you can um, eat. But again, like I said, we're feeding, we're feeding each other um, well. Um, I'm very excited about this. We're going to, there will be a survey that's going out um, next week to help us to identify some, some goals, do some reflecting on what we've done so far and really kind of forge ahead with a vision um, proactively rather than reactively every year. Um, she's not she's not on the call right now, but Adrian asks us, you know, when we're allocating our money, like, who are we? What do we want to be? And what are we what are we doing? What's our big picture? Um, this is an opportunity to get in front of that even before we get in front of the, the city as a whole, asking them what they would like to see. We can start to talk about what we would like to see. So I uh, strongly encourage everybody uh, to show up and participate um, in that. Uh, obviously, ideally, we would like for everybody to show up for the full uh, three hours. Um, the state was selected with everyone's availability in mind um, as shared on the doodle. But if you cannot attend the whole thing, it would be best to attend uh, a portion of it. Um, although, again, ideally, it would be the entire um, duration. So from that retreat, we're hoping to be able to reinvigorate the committees that we have currently create any new committees that come out of that visioning, those visioning exercises um, that we do. And also the hope is that with this new vision that a leader will emerge or that a group of leaders will emerge um, to take on my role as chair. Um, we also have a vice chair position. And then there are also, of course, the committee leads. And so um, that takes us into the timeline reminders for um, the election. If you are interested in um, leadership or are concerned um, with direction, but don't think that you yourself want a role, I would strongly encourage you to join me on the nominating committee. Uh, the nominating committee in the past has drafted questions uh, for candidates for leadership, um, did some interviewing, and then put out a recommendation uh, to the um, advisory board members overall around thoughts on uh, the next um, group of leaders. So again, that would be something that you could do immediately. You can reach out to me, you can reach out to Jad if you want to be on the nominating committee. Um, somebody join me. <laughs> um, it's not necessarily a committee if it's just one person. Uh, so uh, there's that. Um, but again, let me pull up my... Um, uh, Kelly, can you give the location again of where to retreat? Where, the location? Um, Chad, do you know it's um, on the south side, but close? Uh, Chad, what's the specific location? Yes, it's at the Hot Metal Faith Community. Um, and Derek, you might have the exact address on the top of your head, but I think it's on Jane Street. Um, but it is in the south side. 
I can resend yep. out the information to everybody. It's at 2700 Jane Street on the south side. So um, with the retreat on the 17th, um, the goal is to, um, okay, so I guess I'll reverse. The goal is to have elections on April 6th. With the retreat, everybody should be invigorated, have an idea kind of of where they would like to serve. And then the week of the 20th, we'll be accepting uh, nominations. You can self-nominate. You can nominate someone else. Um, we'll be uh, receiving materials, reviewing them, and then put those forward the week of the 27th for the advisory board members to um, consider um, and take a look at and, and ponder uh, their choices in advance of the election, which would be on the 6th. So a pretty rapid turnaround time uh, from the retreat to our election. And um, again, so just keep both of those in mind, please. Um, any questions on any of that other than location? And I will note too, and Derek, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there is parking and in that area uh, at the location as well. So, and off street parking or on street parking as well. I mean, so off and on street parking available at that location. That's correct. Yeah, that uh, the church does have a parking lot attached um, and there's free parking in the neighborhood right around there. So if we have any questions concerning this, the nomination process or just this process in general before the retreat, should we just direct them to Derek or Jad? Um, Jad or um, myself would be, um, it would, would probably be able to answer your questions. Okay, perfect. Or both and either, you know, we work together. <laughs> it's probably tired of seeing me uh, in my square. Um, yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right. Well, I look forward to seeing everybody in person here for a longer period of time and doing some deep dives as well. And we have one more slide, which is I think our updates on expenditures um, for our programs. So uh, take it away, Jack. Thank you, Kelly. So at the request of the board, I did separate out our committed and allocated funds versus our dispersed funds for everybody's reference. If this will let me go to the next screen. There we go. So here you can see is our committed and closed funds from inception till present. So some of the programs that we consistently, you know, indicate that there are, you know, not as much spent, like the legal assistance program, housing stabilization program, you can see that these are pretty much maxed out at their committed levels. Um, you know, homeowner assistance program is completely maxed out. So this gives some context into how much funds are not allocated um, whatsoever. And then I will note too that for the small landlord fund, um, we do have three other projects that are in the works but haven't been um, committed yet, worth another $160,000. So that amount is getting up there with the max amount um, that we will have. And then in relation to what has been dispersed so far, um, this indicates what has been put out the door actually in the hands of these projects or individuals. Um, so this gives some extra context into that as well. And I can, you know, if people have questions about this, I will send out this PowerPoint slide to everybody. Um, but, you know, if you look back and forth between these two slides, you are able to see some of the differences that were asked for by the board. Any initial questions in regard to any of that? And I will note really the you know biggest things that have changed since last month are, you know, we did have some of those rental gap programs that were approved that um, went forward in the last couple of months and those have been put on here as well. Otherwise, it's been mostly incremental changes across the programs. So I will go through these slides as per usual of each program. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to stop me. So for the down payment and closing cost assistance program. We have percent of funds spent by AMI level and council district. 
for the legal assistance program, we have the percent of projects by city council district and AMI level. For the housing stabilization program, we have projects completed by AMI level and council district. For the homeowner assistance program, we have the percents fund by council district and then our breakout of what's in the pipeline um, versus what's committed and closed all together with, you know, just HOF funds, but then also with other funds as well, uh, just to give context of the extra monies that go into these programs. And then for the for sale development rental gap program, percent of funds spent by city council district and AMI level. These are only just slightly different from the rental gap programs that just went through. And that is all I have for program expenditures. Thank you, Kelly. I like the new charts, by the way. I think they're getting progressively easier uh, to understand. Um, so if nobody's told you yet, um, I. We appreciate, <laughs> uh, I think I speak for other people when I say we appreciate your graphics. Um, yeah, and the clarity. I agree. Um, yeah, thanks for, for reorganizing that. I know it's a pain in the, in the back, a pain in the neck, but appreciate it. I think it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, they were a little tough. <laughs> it yeah, needs to be a little bit tough. <laughs> no, you're welcome. And, you know, I think it has been very useful to see that information as well. So, you know, if there's anything else that comes up along the way, just let me know if we need to make additional changes and we're happy to do so. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I, I just have two questions. Um, so I'm assuming 2023 funds are just fully available. Yeah, the 2023 funds haven't come through yet. So they usually come out here in the spring at some point, I believe usually like in April or May is about when they come through. So once those get um, actually pushed over to us at that point, then we would include those figures on this chart as well. Okay. And um, I don't know the council districts, you know, by heart based on a number, um, but what was the one that had the very low percentage, I think like 1%? Um, so typically, council. Oh, Jack, district, can you go back to the slide, please? So. Yep. Yeah, it depends which one you're talking about. But typically, I will say the uh, council district eight usually has the smaller amount. Yeah, that's the one. What, what district is that? Or who, who, whose district? That's council person Strasburger's district, I believe. Is that district eight? Um, I would defer to Evan or Derek on that one. District 8 is absolutely Councilman Strasburg. Ah, thank you. Like, like, I'm, like, it's been a second, but I think I remember. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so that would be Squirrel Hill. I yeah, am I District 7, and that's also relatively low. Um, District 5 is Councilwoman um, Warwick. And where are the other kind of low percentages? I think that's those are the lowest ones I'm seeing on this slide. Yeah. So like District 6 is uh, Councilman Burgess, um, or, you know, it's Councilman Laval in District right. 9 is um, Councilman Burgess's district. So it seems to be, reflect kind of what I would expect to see um, here. Right. Do we have one for the, um, uh, sorry, down payment and closing cost assistance? Did we see that one already? Okay, sorry. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, Councilwoman, for stepping in to <laughs> let us know who's where. <laughs> no problem. See a lot more of district, uh, district four seems to have a bigger slice of the pie for the home assistance fund. And that's from Councilman Coghill. Um, I do think this is, this is extremely helpful to see it visualized this way by council district. I think it does say a lot about when or if Pittsburghers have the opportunity to choose the, choose the communities they wish to live in and seeing where the availability of this, you know, amazing programs that we do have here and the allocation of which, you know, where they're going, whether it be uh, permanent housing, rental housing, and the development of housing. Um, I think as a committee, we need to be mindful of 
of maybe challenging folks to 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 go outside the box and, and not necessarily going into neighborhoods just because it's easy, but where where folks want to live and have the opportunity to choose where they want to live, work, and play. I think it also, um, and I'm so excited for us to start thinking about these things and going into our retreat, shameless plug, um, but we've talked before about going further back in the in the timeline, right? Because if we think a lot of Pittsburghers don't want to cross bridges in terms of when they're finding where they want to live in the ready of the ready availability of home ownership um, as an option. It, it, it's just a lot of things to think about, and I'm, I'm excited to hear that we that we are. Um, Any other thoughts, comments, questions for Jed on these program expenditures and updates? All right. If there's nothing else, um, following the retreat on the 17th, our next advisory board meeting um, will be uh, Thursday, April 6th at 2 p.m. Uh, we should be in person in chambers um, with remote options for that meeting that is uh, the plan and our current trajectory is to be able to do that. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone, for your time and attention and to URA staff for shepherding us along. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn if there's nothing else. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Councilwoman. Second. All right. And we do not uh, need to A and nay on this. So I will see everyone in a couple of weeks. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Take thank care. You. Thank you.